Described as a man who can step in mid-air, this Sherberg product forged an 11-year NRL career. Played 12 games in the green and gold and eight matches in the centres for the Queensland Maroons. Gifted with a jink and a step that rarely saw him tackled in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it's been his toughness that has inspired the Maroons in recent years. Playing on with a shoulder injury in Game 1 of the 2011 Origin Series. It's the talented Willie Tonga. Great to see you, Willie. How are you? Good, brother. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it's been an awesome few days, you know, just getting uh, time to spend with our Maroons legends, and it's great that you can join us for a chat, brother. So I reckon we just uh, go right from the start and yep. born uh, in the ACT. Yeah, born in Canberra. Good one, um, Canberra. Yeah, I'm not sure what mum and dad were doing down there, but <laughs> I was uh, born in Canberra, and then um, I don't think we stayed there long. Yeah. Um, and then moved back to Peak Hill, which yep. is where I, I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like my early childhood. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And you have some good memories of Peak Hill? Yeah, it was um, you know the same as um, any other young kid growing up. We didn't have rugby league then. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I wasn't introduced to rugby leagues till a little bit later, but yeah, we'd just go down the creek, yeah, you know, yeah. go fishing, yeah. yeah, sort of wrap bagging around. <laughs> and so you went from Peak Hill, then moved to Cootamundra when you were 12? Yep, when, yeah, I moved there when we were 11. 11, um, yeah. Yeah, so mum and dad uh, had Bible college in Cootamundra, uh -huh. and that's where I heard about, not heard about rugby league, but you know, all the boys at school yep. were playing rugby league. Yeah, I yeah. didn't play my first year while I was in Cootamundra and then the boys sort of convinced me to play um, the second year that I was there. Excellent, excellent. That's unreal. Then from uh, Cootamundra, you made the, the family made the big move at, up to Sherberg. We, we spent two years in Cootamundra. Uh, went to Sydney for one year. Uh -huh. um, we lived in La Perouse. Um And so I played one year um, rugby league in Cootamundra. Yeah. Moved to Sydney yeah. and rugby league was played on a Sunday yeah. in Sydney. Right. And we weren't allowed to play because we had to go to church. Gotcha. Yeah. So we had to play rugby union. Okay. Um, played one year rugby union in in Sydney. We moved to Sherberg. Uh, I preferred rugby union over rugby league, so I was I was looking to play rugby union yeah. again. And those Sherberg boys are like, "No, nah, we play rugby league up here." <laughs> uh, so yeah, got into moved to Sherberg, and then um, I think yeah, that's sort of where the journey started. Yeah, and and I guess Sherberg having that proud sort of rugby league history you know it was um, built on sport um, but rugby league was very much a huge part of that um, is that where the passion for the league developed you know um, being in the community and seeing I guess your local heroes playing um, was that a big part of you know where you, where you found the passion for, for, for rugby league yeah for sure it's um you know as you know you've been up to Sherbrooke mm. they live and breathe it that's it. rugby league um, and sports just in general and yeah, every everybody um, after school would be down on the football field, um, you know, kicking goals or just playing touch footy, um, and that was an everyday thing. Yeah. And then you know, come weekend, you know, we'd, we'd play, we'd play rugby league, and then yeah, go to you know the little surrounding towns yeah. close by, Kingaroy, Nanango, um, Wandai. Good rivalries um, with uh, those little towns. Good rivalries, yeah, yeah with. Um, Especially back then, because mm. you know the, the league was still competitive. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, six or eight teams in that South Bernard area. So um, yeah, well, there was good rugby league. Um, especially you know playing against Morgan, yeah. playing against yeah. King of Royal. Yeah. yeah. What were your memories of? Um, I guess you know traveling as a family. Or how would you get to all these games? So it'd be Dad would drive us to most of the games. Yeah. Um, he'd, he'd come to all the games, but um, he'd drive myself and my two brothers. Yeah. Um, so um, they weren't the most enjoyable rides because we'd have to listen to him telling us what we needed to do, yeah. what we needed to do in the game, and yeah. then on the way back home, it was like um, just hearing about what we did wrong. What we did wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. That sounds like most dads, I reckon. You know, yeah, coaching, definitely. coaching from the sidelines, and, and then um, yeah, and then, and then sometimes we'd, we'd get like a fourteen seater, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and then one of the older followers would drive and. Um, I remember we'd have to go around to the community and then like knock on the boys' houses, <laughs> knock on their doors to yeah. um, just to try and rake up like a, a thirteen, a, a team, yeah, a thirteen yeah. man squad, yeah. yeah. And who were like you know, those coaches or managers or those volunteers at back in Sherberg that you remember that you know played a big part in, I guess, you becoming um, the the young footballer that you were going to become? Yeah, I, I think 
um, dad was my biggest um, influence yeah. um, for sure. And then as we moved to Sherberg, you know, just there was so much natural talent yeah. around Sherberg. And um, one guy that I really looked up to was uh, Ricky Bird, yes. who you know well. And, yeah, just everything about what he did yeah. um, on the field, but off the field as well. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he was always down there training by himself, yeah. and yeah. I looked at that and then you know take that upon myself yeah. to yeah. if I if I wanted to go any further, That's then it. I'm going to have to um, you know make that sacrifice and, and train harder and yeah. Yeah. Um, you know eat right and things like that. And I guess you know growing up out at Sherbrooke, yeah. He's one of your local legends and I think a hero to a lot of kids in the country, uh, Steve Renoff. Talk to me about the kind of impact that he had on your career as, as a young young lad growing up, um, being from Sherberg, but then, you know, wanting to get reach the heights that, that he did. Yeah, I've told Pearl this as well. Um, you know, when I was younger, I'd, I think one of the first rugby league games that I watched was um, the Broncos. Yep. Um, and I think it might have been the grand final when they played St George. Yep. And I saw... I saw him play, and I was still living in um, in Peak Hill at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was pretty crazy how it all worked out. But <laughs> I saw him play, and then I th- thought to myself, you know, I, I want to, yeah. I want to be like him. Like you him. know, I want to yeah, yeah. um, be able to play rugby league like him. Um, a couple of years later, we moved to Sherbrooke. Yeah. You know, I went to Mergen High School, and yeah. you know, which is where Pearl's from, and. Yeah, just knowing that he went to that school yeah. and you know he, he sort of played on those same footy it. fields yeah. and, and um, yeah, seeing a, like a young indigenous man sort of make it to the top, it sort of made me think that yeah, if he could do it, yeah. you know, I was lucky enough to be able to play representative football yeah. and um, yeah, now work alongside him. How good is that? It's come full circle again. It eh? has, it has. It's working um, uh, at Deadly Choices as a fellow ambassador, which is awesome. And um, you know, uh, it must be funny, eh? Like just seeing him every day, the way we do for work, and then uh, those memories of being a kid and watching him on the football field. I don't think you know Pearl really um, understands the influence that he had yeah. on us younger boys. Yes. Um, yeah. And I know that. It's, um, he gets a little bit uncomfortable yeah. when, I, when I do tell him that, but um, it's a Just truth. Humility, hey? it's, yeah, it's a truth, and um, you know, he's. I'm sure that you know, all over Queensland, there's, there's yeah. young kids growing up, you know, wanting to um, be like Pearl, sitting that headgear flashed down the side. That headgear, yeah. <laughs> now you um, talk about you know your your bond to, to Sherberg. Like, Everyone support each other. When you guys would, would travel, it was like a caravan of cars that would all follow, and that that all make the trips to come and support you. Yeah, ev- everywhere we played, um, you know, whether it was just in the South Bernard area, yeah, or yeah. Um, you know, or playing over in Toowoomba or yeah. Gympie, or yeah. even up as far as Cairns and Townsville. Jeez, eh? People, um, everyone would travel. That 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 travel. That's and it must mean a lot to you as young fellows, eh? Like knowing that you know you've got aunties and uncles and all the whole town there supporting you and willing you on, eh? Yeah, definitely. It's um, it, it's very encouraging as a as a young fella coming through. Um, when you've got that strong support and that network there, um, you know, sort of pushing you along to to be the best you can be. And uh, man, I, I bet you on those trips there was plenty of uh, good banter, eh? What was the, the, the choice of music? I, I, I guess it would be uh, what mainly uh, would drink a bit of country and western on country and western for sure. <laughs> yeah. So who I was who I was driving. Yeah, had the choice of music, and yeah, usually yeah. it was our coaches, and <laughs> um, yeah, would listen to all the all the older older music. Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes we had Walkmans back then. Yeah, that's right. Um, Walkmans, so yeah. when the boys didn't want to hear what was going on over the <laughs> over the um, over the speakers, they just throw the head, headphones on. Yeah, unreal, unreal. I, I guess it must be funny for you now. Like we talk about, you know, going full circle. You know, the influence that Sherberg had on you, and then now we're seeing. You know the emergence of someone like Selwyn Cobber, mm-hmm. who's yeah. coming now, coming into NRL. Amazing story, growing up in Sherberg and now on the verge of an unbelievable NRL career. It must be good to know that there's young fellas like him coming through, eh, representing Sherberg. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there's. I think I touched on it before. There's always been that talent there. Yeah. Um, and now seeing Selwyn, uh, you know, come through the ranks and like, you know, he. He's born in Sherbrooke yep. Um, yep. and grew up there, and um, yeah, just burst onto the scene last year. Yep. And I yep. think he's 
yeah, the sky's the limit for it. You know, unbelievable talent, um, very down to earth, very <laughs> humble kid, and um, yeah, oh, I think that you know, with the path that he he sets for himself, yeah. he's gonna be able to. Uh, there's gonna be young kids back in Sherbrooke looking up to Selwyn and um, you know wanting to be the best versions of themselves. Yeah. So from, from Sherberg, where'd you go to high school? In Mergen. In Mergen, yeah. and then from Mergen. So tell me, how did you get picked up uh, into the NRL? Yeah, it was, I, I was playing a game in Kingaroy, mm-hmm. just a local game, um, playing for Sherberg, and, yeah. and there happened to be like a, a Parramatta scout uh, yeah. in the stands. Yeah. Um, he approached me after the game, and um, yeah, he said that he would get me down to Para for a trial. Um, what was that like, Ben, to, to hear someone say that, you know, you, 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 you know, this is your dream coming true, that, you know, you, you, we're going to take you down to Sydney and go to one of the most iconic clubs in our game's history down to Parramatta. It must have been yeah, just yeah, crazy. Well, I, I think because I'd never made Wide Bay before. Uh-huh. Like, I'd, I'd, I was making the South Burner team, but I could never make that next step. Take and, the next step, yeah. Yeah, and I was, I was 17, yeah. and then... And you hear about all these other kids getting signed at mm. 16, 17 on, on these um, on these scholarships, yeah. and you're thinking, you know, like you're still only 17, but you're yeah. thinking, oh, I've, I'm not going to make it. Yes. You yeah. know, I've lost my chance. And then, yeah, there was an opportunity there where I was asked to get out to Parramatta, yeah. you know, for a trial, and I, I believed in myself so much, but yeah. that yeah. I thought I just need one opportunity. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah, went down for that trial. It was the last trial, actually, um, before they picked the squad. Jeez. And, um, yeah, it just started from there. Yeah, unreal. And then, so you work your way through the grades. Talk to me about um, that journey, you know, trying to prove yourself to... Because it never didn't come easy. I mean, you had to, I guess, figure a lot of this stuff out by yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, so I moved from Sherbrooke um, to Sydney when I was 17. Okay. It's a massive move. You know, it is. Being um, so young and yeah, by myself. Yep. And so we moved. I, I moved in with uh, um, family friends who I didn't really know well, yep. and um, it was out in Mount Druitt as well. Yep. So a, um, a massive adjustment. Um, missing home. Um, you know, after two weeks, I, I wanted to come home, and yep. um, my mum came down actually and stayed for a month. Yeah, convinced me to stay yep. to yep. stick it out. And um, well, that's been really hard, eh? Like just dealing with the home. Missing everyone, you yeah, know. all of that. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah, just growing up and, and yeah. being so close to my family, and um, you know, family's a big part of my life. And um, so going down there by myself was tough. And then yeah, having to sort of navigate myself around, yeah. you know, Sydney, and yeah. um, and then yeah, I got an opportunity. I, I started that year on the bench for SG Ball, yeah. and I finished that year playing um, in the grand final. Of, um, for Reggie's, um, yeah. and when Parramatta lost to Newcastle in, the, yeah. in the um, in first grade, yeah. um, so I was like, yeah, it was a pretty big year. It's massive, mate. Massive. And then talk to me about your first grade debut. It's all a blur, yeah. to be honest. Um, it was I was called up because Jamie Lyon, who was the uh, yeah. the first grade centre yeah. at Parramatta, he was called into Origin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was called in to, to replace him, and it was against the Roosters. Yeah, right. um, so my, who, who had a red hot side too? No, they no. had a gun side, and um, I was up against Hodjo. Um, <laughs> my debut game, yeah. so I, I was 18, yeah. he was only 19. Yeah. So we were kids back then. We were standing there waiting for the yeah. Roosters to run out, and they run out, and the nerves didn't kick in until I saw um, Freddie Fittner run out. <laughs> so when he ran out, and, and Brett Mullins. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was two a big fan of uh, Brett too. Mullins as well. Yeah, so yeah. as soon as them two ran out, that's when it, um, it really hit me that I cool. was playing first grade. Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, what about that phone call to, to mum and dad? That must have been an amazing overnight to, to let them know that you're, you're going to be making your first grade debut. Yeah, I remember making that phone call and um, you know I was over the moon. I remember mum, you know, she was crying. Yeah. You know, um, just knowing that all that hard work paid off, yeah, and then yeah. especially when she was the one that was, you know, trying to get you to stay. In yeah, and definitely, and definitely. Like, yeah, two years before that, yeah. I, I was ready to go back home, yeah, uh, yeah. but she um, she knew how bad I wanted it, yeah. and then she came down to convince me to stay. So yeah, a, a lot of it I put down to my parents and how supportive they were. Yeah. After that first grade experience, what about you know the, the amazing moment in your life in your in your career when? Um, you get called in to make your State of Origin debut. What, what was all that? What, what was that like? 
Um, yeah, that was very unexpected as well. Um, so the week before the selection, we mm. played the Roosters. Uh-huh. Yeah, we gave them a hiding. Yeah. Um, and Hodjo, who was the centre at the time mm-hmm. for Queensland, he got suspended in that game. Oh. And so G Miles calls me. Uh, Willie, we're going to bring you into camp. And I, I, I had, I wasn't expecting to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they had Brent Tate, yeah. um, and Paul yeah. Bowman already, and. So I was just happy that I was going into camp. Just to go into um, camp, yeah, yeah. So I go into camp, and yeah, without me knowing, like, Tatey, he didn't pass medicals. Oh. Nobody told me that I was playing, Jeez. so I just had to work it out for myself. Um, so I think at the first that first training session, Hagen, he was the coach. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and I just looked around, I'm like, yeah. there's Paul Bowman and yeah. nobody else. Yeah. I think I'm playing, so... Um, oh, so the coach, Mick Hagen and the He didn't even tell me. Didn't no, tell you, oh, nobody no. told me that I was playing. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I just had to work it out for Look myself. Out, and yeah, yeah. That whole week leading into your first match, um, to just imagine the nerves, you know, how you were feeling. I mean, that, that was, uh, what was that like? You know, the, it's the build up into, I guess, you know, the, the biggest uh, game of your life and up to that point, you know, you're making your, your origin debut. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> Like to think back at it now, it's it's still a little bit surreal. Yeah. Like I, you know, I I was getting ready to run out alongside players that I I grew up watching. Yeah. You know, as yeah. yourself, Shane Webke, mm-hmm. um, Darren Lockyer. Um, so and I, you know, I'm only I'm still a kid. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah so it was very surreal, um, and I, I remember not really talking in camp. Um, I think we had camp down on the Gold Coast. That's right, um, we used to yeah, stay down there. Yeah. Um, was that up on the hill there at Bungana? On the hill. Yes. There was like no TV, That's no right. reception. You um, thought, what the hell are we going to do? Yeah, I, I didn't understand it. And, um, it's not what I thought it was going to be yeah. like, but um, yeah, an awesome week. Everybody was, everybody was sort of, made me feel comfortable yeah. in, in being selected in that team. For you, um, yeah, haven't you? Did mum and dad come down to the game? The game was in Brisbane. Yeah, so, so they were um, there. Yeah, 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 they were there. That's some cool. Yeah. I, I can't remember how many tickets I got. Um, <laughs> what have they trying to get everyone in from Sherbrooke? Yeah, I've seen photos though um, yeah. since then and just of everybody that was at that That's game. That's good. Um, I mean, I imagine the pride, uh, you know, for everyone, you know, being in the crowd, you know, come from a little town like Sherbrooke to see one of their own. Um, you know, especially after Pearl had, had done what he'd done and, you know, so many other great local players, but there for you to be on that stage, you know, uh, must have been such a proud moment for, uh, for the whole community. Eh? Yeah, well, I think it was special for them. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of the, you know, Sherbrooke yeah. mob came to the game yeah. as well, so um, it, just, it just, it made me feel good as yeah, well, that yeah. they were supporting me yeah. and, yeah. Um, and it was, it was the same people from, you know, when I was 13, 14, um, you know, travelling to those games yeah, and yeah. always being there to, to support us, yeah. to, um, um, to be the best versions of ourselves. That's it, yeah. that's it. I wanted to sort of talk about too, like, the legacy that you've created within the Maroons, you know. Um, I guess there was that famous game, you know, throughout, um, I think it might have been the 2011 series. Yeah. Um, it was a game one. He had a really serious shoulder injury. Game one, yeah. Yes, uh, and and um, and I remember multiple efforts where your, your shoulder was absolutely gone, but you just kept hanging in and kept defending. You know, uh, I know that's something that for a lot of uh, the Queensland hierarchy, they talk about. You know, what's what is a, what does a Maroon effort look like? What does a what does a Queensland effort look like? And you know, they talk openly about about that. You know, mm-hmm. what you did that game. You know. Do you have any memories of, of, uh, of that moment, you know, um, pushing yourself through the pain to be able to make the next tackle, make the next play? Oh, I remember it all. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the most pain I've ever been in, for sure. Um, I remember hurting my shoulder about the 20 minute mark. Um, I, I landed awkwardly when um, I think it was Josh Dugan came down. Yeah. And I, I remember I told Gilly, mm. I said, my shoulder's no good, I, I could just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And he ran out. He said, "No, nah, you'd be right. It's just a, it's just a burner." A burner. <laughs> the old burner. I'm like, "All right." And so, a couple of minutes later, I said, "I, I can't, I can't lift it." Yeah. He goes, "Yeah, it'll, 
it'll come good, trust me. And then he said, can you make it to half time? Because yeah. I was really struggling. Yeah, and yeah. I looked at our bench and I think, I think there might have been. Um, we might have been down a couple Yeah, of I, th I think Dave Taylor, That's it. Cooper Cronk, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, yeah, it, it'd have to be like a massive shuffle. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, all right, let me make it to, to half time yeah. and then, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Mm -hmm. um, we go into the sheds at half time. Um, the doc tells me that I've blown my shoulder and Jeez. I said, well, I remember asking him, I said, can I do any more damage? Yeah. Yeah. And when he said, no, I couldn't, yeah. um, I said, that's all I need to know. And then I remember Mal, Mal being there with the yeah. doc. And yeah. then I remember Lockie walking into the dressing room, like yeah. into our room yeah. where we were. Um, he walked in and then sort of just gave me one look and then walked out. Yeah. And I'm thinking, all right, I just told the doc, strap it up, I'm going back in. Um, I don't know what made me what made yeah, me think that, yeah, but yeah. yeah, I just think that's just the Queensland spirit. Yeah, that's, that's, um, it. that's it. And I think any one of those boys that were playing in that jersey or that have played in that jersey, yeah. um, they, I, I think they would have done the same thing. Yeah, uh, I think the, the week leading up to our game, like, mm. you know, they bring in the, the older boys, yeah. like, you know, Choppy Close that's and, yeah. um, you know, Gilly, um, Hetherington, yeah. you know, and you can see how, how much it means to them. Yeah. And so, one, you don't want to let your teammates down, but you don't want to let them down as well yeah. because they, they put this trust in you to, to wear that jersey. And yeah. yeah, I was just thankful that I, I got through the game. Um, and I'm lucky I had I had um, Darius on my wing because yeah. um, I was marking up against Mark Gaznia. Yeah, right. And he's a handful at that. He's a handful. He's yeah. a handful yeah. when yeah. you're 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was down, you know, I only had one shoulder. and. Yeah. Um, I had Jono inside me and um, Darius on the outside and, and Darbs was, he was massive, like yes. just reading these plays and yeah. just coming out of the line and like, you know, snapping Gaz. Um, yeah, shut the play down. Yeah, shut, shut it down. Um, and then, you know, JT sort of just, you know, egging me on to, yeah. to yeah. keep going, just, just keep to pushing. go for that next tackle. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing, you know. I, I get goosebumps, you know, when you're talking about it because, again, like, you know, when you think about some of the most courageous things that Queensland's ever done in the jersey, that's definitely up there. You know, you talk about, like, guys like Gilly and pushing him to get himself out of a sick bed, you know. Yep. Um, you know, guys playing on with injuries, but, I mean, but to, to hear it like that and to hear what you went through mentally to sort of push yourself to that next uh, stage and then, you know, to get the result that we did, it was amazing, you know, and... Uh, says a lot about you and your, your character and you're talking about Lockie and geez I'm playing alongside Lockie what was that like playing was that the left edge left left edge and yeah. so what was it was there any issues with playing on the left edge with Lockie was it the only issues I had was sometimes I couldn't hear him um <laughs> with his with his voice with but, his voice um I've, I've never been nervous outside of a player yeah. than Darren Lockie oh, yeah. like he yeah. just the way he played the game, yeah. like everything was yeah. was spot on, yeah. and so that he expected that of everybody else. Yeah. And so um, every time he passed me the ball, I was I just remember like just catch the ball, just, just catch the ball, and then yeah. after catching the ball, just yeah. do whatever after. Uh, that's um, awesome. You did that well, man. You did that well. I just love uh, you know, the way you used to play, you know, and uh, you know just on the edge you used to give New South Wales just so much trouble and. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was always great to watch, and uh, you know, again, being able to link with a player like Darren Lockett must have been, you know, super special. And obviously, JT on the inside, and then, you know, the, the players that we had. Now, you had such a great Origin career, but what 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 do you reckon stands out for you? Um, what, what is it about the Origin jersey that means so much to Queenslanders, and why why do you think it, it brings out the very best in you uh, as as a player? I, I think the players that have played before us. Mm -hmm. And, and what they did in that jersey, seeing what players did before me, yep. um, and how and after hearing stories of what the boys went through to, to play, um, you want to try and try and live up to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and not only the players that have played before us, but just you know the the fans as well. Mm. You know how how like. Every time we would go out to you know Roma yeah, or yeah, Dolby, yeah. like hundreds and hundreds of people just come out and just they, they were really thankful that we we're there. Yeah. 
so seeing how much it meant to them mm. it sort of puts things into perspective yeah. it's um it's something that, you, that that'll never leave you you know when you get to put that maroon jersey on you'll never ever forget that feeling hey? and uh yep. it's something that uh it's very special you know even now we've both retired it's, it's good that we can think back about those great memories and how fellow Queensland has inspired us on to you know, to, in those matches with that, you know, it felt like we had no more to give. Yeah, for but sure. But they hear that roar of the crowd, it just, for some for some reason, it just, you know, willed you on to make the next play. And um, it's something that's really special about Queensland. So now you've uh, finished from footy. Um, uh, I'm very lucky I get to work alongside you. And uh, as a Deadly Choices ambassador, um, working in the community, how have you found that role and uh, what do you enjoy about it? Uh, I, I, I love everything about what I do. Um, you know, working with uh, Indigenous people um, and you know trying to, to make a difference. Um, you know, with our people and going out into the community and um, yeah, seeing seeing the smiles on people's faces yeah. that um, you can put on them. Yeah. Like you know that that's rewarding. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Knowing that I can put a smile on somebody else's face, like. That's it. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, I, I love that, uh, you know, going out to the